This is a game I wrote running on real hardware. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to set up a development environment so you can start making your own Game Boy games. The best way to program the system is to use a language called Game Boy Z80 Assembly. If you've never coded an assembly before, don't worry, it does take a little getting used to, but it's not nearly as bad as some folks make it out to be. That said, even if you are well versed in the language, you're not going to get far unless you have an assembler and a linker to turn your code into a functioning ROM. In this episode, I'll show you the tools that I use when writing games and step you through how to use those tools to build an open source demo project I put up on the Nest Hacker GitHub. Additionally, I'll cover a little bit about how to use flash ROM carts like the EverDrive to get your games running on real hardware. All right, with that covered, let's start by taking a closer look at Game Boy Z80 assembly. The Game Boy is a weird system for a lot of reasons, but one of the more esoteric ones is that its central processing unit is kind of a hybrid. The processor, known as the Sharp LR35902, was built collaboratively by Nintendo and Sharp specifically for the Game Boy, and it's sort of a melding between the Intel 8080 and the Zilog Z80 processors. At an instruction level, it's more like the Z80, but it doesn't implement all of that processor's features, so that's why it has its own language. Now, when it comes to building your own ROMs, you'll need an assembler and a linker that understands this specialized Game Boy assembly. And as far as I'm concerned, the best option is RGBDS. It works on all major operating systems, has been in development for nearly 30 years, and has everything you need to turn your source code into a playable Game Boy game. RGBDS is basically a small collection of command line tools, including an assembler a linker, and something called a fixer, but I'm not going to get into the details of how that works in this episode. Getting RGBDS is pretty simple. Just go to the project's website, find the install page, and follow the instructions for your particular operating system. But if you're having trouble and you need more detailed installation instructions, I created some additional videos showing how to install and configure most of the tools for this video for all major operating systems. The links are pinned at the top of the comment section. With the build tools out of the way, I think we should talk a little bit about code editors. Now, you can use whatever editor you're most comfortable with, but I think there's a case to be made that Visual Studio Code is just excellent for Game Boy development. Let me explain. VS Code is a great option for a lot of reasons. It has a good build system, built-in source control, and fluid modern navigation. But while all that's great, I think its killer feature is actually IntelliSense, which provides context-sensitive information about code as you're programming. Okay, so opening up a Game Boy assembly file from the demo in vanilla VS Code isn't particularly impressive. It kind of just treats it like a plain text file. But if I go and install the RGBDS Z80 extension, things get way better. First, you'll probably notice that the file now has syntax highlighting, which makes the assembly code slightly more readable. But one of my favorite features is that if I hover over a variable in the file, I'll get any documentation associated with that variable. This one in particular is a hardware register used to toggle the system's audio hardware on and off. And if I control click the register, the editor will take me to its definition in the hardware.inc file a freely available include file that's used in most homebrew games. Anyway, the documentation that the editor showed was provided using the comments right above the symbol's definition, and you can document all of your own code in the same way. By pressing the back button to return the editor to the demo code, you can see that I've documented pretty much everything here like this vblink macro and all these subroutines. Speaking of subroutines, sometimes when I'm coding, I need to take a look at what's going on inside a routine, but I really don't want to leave my current spot. To handle this kind of situation, the plugin also implements VS Code's peak feature, which lets you see the definition for a routine or a variable without having to leave the code you're currently working on. If you're new to Game Boy Assembly, then one of the best IntelliSense features that this plugin implements is automatic code and symbol completion. For instance, I can start typing out an instruction and it will give me a list of all the possible ways that I can use that instruction. Further, I can click to show more information and I'll get inline documentation about what that instruction does and all of the processor flags that it affects. This is super useful because I don't want to stop my train of thought and go searching through the RGBDS documentation every time I forget exactly how a subtract with carry works. If you want to try this all out, installing VS Code is dead simple. Just head to code.visualstudio.com, look for the big blue download button, and it should automatically give you the appropriate download link depending on your operating system. Anyway, let's switch to a potentially even more contentious topic, which emulator you should use. Now for game development, you don't want to use just any old emulator. You'll want one that's faithful to the Game Boy's hardware and comes with tools that are useful when programming games. Given these two criteria, it's my opinion you really only have two options for your development environment. 
you'll either use BGB or Emulicious. BGB is a minimalist, hardware-accurate Windows native emulator that boasts an excellent debugger. It also has a bunch of tools that make it easy to figure out what's happening with things like sprites and backgrounds as a game is running. Emulicious is a multi-system emulator with similar debugging tools that's written in Java, meaning it works on pretty much all major operating systems by default. It also has a VS Code extension that allows you to do all of your debugging right inside the editor. As far as which one you should choose, I'd say that really depends on your operating system. Windows users can absolutely use both, so if you like the debugging with Emulicious but want to check your ROMs for hardware compatibility in BGB, knock yourself out. If you're not on Windows, I highly suggest using Emulicious. You can get BGB running with utilities like Wine and Whiskey, but the process can be kind of convoluted. That said, if you really want to run it and you're not on Windows, the most reliable way I know is to use a virtual machine. If you don't like either of these options, that's okay too. There are a plethora of emulators to choose from. The important thing is that they have decent debugging and memory inspection tools, as those are really important when you're making a game. A couple alternatives that come to mind here are Gearboy and MGBA, both of which are cross-platform. So excluding audio and graphics, which are topics that could fill their own entire videos, that's pretty much all the software tooling you need to start writing and building your own games. But if you're looking to get your games running on real hardware, you'll need a few more things. Thankfully, the process isn't all that complicated. First, you'll need some sort of flash ROM card, like the EverDrive X7 that I use. Nowadays, these cards generally require a micro SD card, so you'll need to buy one of those as well. You don't need anything fancy here. A cheapo 8GB card will more than suffice. You'll likely also need an SD card reader that you can get for really cheap on Amazon. Though I would avoid the absolute cheapest options, as they can be buggy and malfunction. A lesson I learned the hard way. Another gotcha if you decide to go with the EverDrive is that it requires the SD card be formatted using the FAT32 file system, a kind of old Windows standard. Hilariously, I could find no way of formatting the card to use that file system with the default tools on Windows 11, so I had to use my Mac to format it instead. Once your SD card is set up and you've installed any of the files required by the card's manufacturer, Go ahead and drag your custom built.gb files into the appropriate place and you should be good to go. Okay, that's it. That's all the tools that I use in my personal Game Boy development environment. So with all of that covered, let's jump into the demo project really quick and I'll show you how to use those tools to build some real code. To start, if you haven't already done so, head over to the Nest Hacker GitHub and download the demo project. With the project downloaded, unzip it to your computer somewhere and open up the main project folder in Visual Studio Code. To build the project, open up VS Code's command palette and execute the run build task command. This will open up a new terminal window in the editor and run the make command to build the ROM from source. Remember, you have to have both RGBDS and make installed in order for this to work. So if you're having trouble setting these up, make sure to check out those videos pinned in the comment below. I have detailed instructions for all the major operating systems. Once the task finishes, that's pretty much it. The ROM has been built. Simply launch the emulator of your choice, load it up, and test it out a bit. At this point, you can start diving into the code and making some changes. And if you're feeling adventurous, even download a binary pixel art tool like YYCHR to add some custom graphics. Then when you're happy with the result, go ahead and load it up on an EverDrive, slot it into your Game Boy, and show it off to your friends the next time you're all together. This video was not only supported, but it was selected by the paid members on the Nest Hacker Patreon. If you want to support the channel while getting access to behind the scenes updates, bonus content, and occasionally helping me make decisions, you should sign up on patreon.com forward slash Nest Hacker today. Thanks for watching Nest Hacker. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon if you want to be notified when I post new videos on the channel. And if you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments.